Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee. Thank you.
You can look at my life and see what you want to see. Well, think what you want to think and be my judge and the jury. Say he's just a, an old sinner. Well, that's all very true. But I met the man called Jesus. I got news for you. I got things. And then chains fell away. I got things. And still saved the day. Others may doubt it, but that don't change a thing. I got I got I got Well, I may not preach like some folks or sing the way some do. May I raise my hands the highest or shout like some of you. When you hear my testimony, as some of you may frown, but I'm washed in the blood of Calvary, and my name's been written down. I got saved, and then chains fell away. I got Well, others may doubt it, but that don't change a thing. I got saved. I got saved. I got saved. I got saved.
and take your Bibles this morning and turn with me over to the book of 2 Peter chapter number 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 this morning. And while you're turning there, I would say that uh, we're on UpperPeachTreeBaptistChurch.com. We're on the radio uh, quite often, uh, three stations around the local area, and um, we have a CD ministry if you'd like a copy of today's message. And also, we're located at 3015 Upper Peach Tree Road, Murphy, North Carolina, 28906. Come be with us. Second Peter chapter 3 this morning, looking at uh, verse number 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I'd like to speak today, Lord willing, for just a few minutes on this subject, our Lord's long-suffering. Our Lord's long-suffering, uh, you know, long-suffering, according to Strong's Concordance, the translation of that word right there, it's a Greek word, and that word is makrothameo. I hope I'm saying that right. But it means to be long-spirited, forbearing, or patient. Bear and suffer long. Be, to be long-suffering, have long patience. To be patient and patiently endure. Webster's Dictionary describes long-suffering as patiently enduring lasting offense or hardship. And can I just say this morning that the Lord has put up with an awful lot from us. Amen. I mean mankind. God has put up with an awful lot from mankind. And you know, uh, God is long-suffering. Thank God. To usward. To us. God is long-suffering. Now had He not been, uh, we'd be in a bad shape right now. Amen. And uh, you know, man got, was created in the, in the likeness and the image of Almighty God and man sinned against God and ever since Genesis chapter 3, Man has been rebelling against God, and the whole time God's reaching out uh, to try to save man. And He's done everything He could to save man from their sins, and to save man from the judgment of God. And uh, because of their sin, I mean, He's a holy God. And uh, we think about God's long suffering, and how that... You know, all the way back, the Bible talks about in Exodus chapter number 34. And if you'll just hold your place right here, I'd like for you to look at this. But Exodus chapter number 34, uh, Moses was, had gone back up there to talk with the Lord and get the tables renewed because Israel had uh, made them some golden calves and went to worshiping them out there in the wilderness. And this is after, now, after God spoke to the whole group of people, the whole bunch of Israel. He told them in chapter 19, He said, Sanctify yourselves three days, and then the third day I'll speak to the whole congregation. And have them come near the mountain, but don't let them touch the mountain. Because if they touch the mountain, holy God would break forth and they would die. And the mountain would be holy. And God came down on the mountain. And you get into Exodus chapter number 20. The first time that you hear the Ten Commandments, He's not just speaking to Moses. The voice of God is thundering from Mount Horeb in Sinai to the whole congregation. And a matter of fact, listen, the fear of God came upon them. And they fell on their faces. And they told Moses, they said, You go talk to the Lord. We're too scared. Oh, the fear, the fear of God came over them. And yet after that, what'd they do? Moses went up on the mountain to speak to God. They gave up on Him so quick. 
And they made themselves a golden calf to worship out there. And this is after all that. And so Moses came down and he broke the tables in front of them. And God had renewed the tables there in chapter number 34. And Moses uh, talked to the Lord and he said, Lord, I can't go on without your presence. And Israel can't go on without your presence. We've got to have you with us. And the Lord told him, he said, look, I want you to come up on the mountain. That mountaintop experience like we talked about this morning. And he said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of a rock and I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to cover your face because no man will look at my face and live. And Moses stood in the cleft of the rock and God passed by and listen to what he told him. Uh, he said this, uh, verse 34, But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak to him, uh, he took the veil off and uh, until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which was commanded. But uh, you look back over here, and uh, chapter 33, the Lord told him, he said in verse 17, he said, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. Has, have you found grace in his sight? Does he know you by name? And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Now, when, when God passed by Moses that day, God himself proclaimed the name of the Lord to Moses. Now, don't miss this. He said, I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Now look in chapter 34, verse 6, verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, listen to this, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, Listen, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and to the fourth generation. Can I just tell you that long-suffering is His middle name? He said, I'll proclaim my name before you. And when God passed before Moses, he proclaimed that his middle name is long-suffering. Look at what he put up with. I mean, after all the wonders that he did in Egypt to bring those people out, and the, the wonders that he exacted on Pharaoh, and then when they came to the Red Sea, and he parted the Red Sea, and they walked across dry shod. And he made water come out of a rock. And he sent them quails. And he sent them manna from heaven to feed them. And after all this, and they saw the pillar of fire by day, and they, or the cloud by day, and the pillar of fire by night, and they heard the voice of God Almighty speak, and yet they rebelled and looked at a golden calf and said, This is the God that brought us out of Egypt. The mercy and the grace of Almighty God for His people and the long suffering that He put up with. You know, way back in Noah's day, He flooded this thing because of their sin. And uh, there was one man on planet earth that found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and that was Noah. And because of His long suffering and His mercy and His grace, He put a rainbow in the cloud. And He said, I'll not flood this thing again. Amen. Yeah. But now, listen to what's coming. Back to the original text, 2 Peter chapter number 3, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible said this, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. He's writing to the beloved. He's writing to the saved. He's writing to you this morning. If you've been born again, that's who this is to. That's who the Holy Ghost wrote this letter to. By the hand of Peter, he said this, you need to remember this. I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, 
said, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Do you think we're living in the last days? I believe we are. And saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. There's a lot of people this morning that said, ah. Maybe they didn't verbalize it out loud. I don't know. Maybe they did. But maybe they said this morning, well, I've heard that preaching all my life that the Lord's coming back. Well, He ain't come back yet. So you know what? I'm just going to go down there at the store and get me a suitcase of Bud Light and I'm going to get on my horse and ride up to the Pot Rock Ball today. Or I'm going to go get on my jet ski and I'm going to go tool around the lake today and I'm just going to do this, that, and the other. And I'm just going to eat, drink, be merry, and have a good time and scoffing at sin and scoffing at the Word of God, making a mockery of sin and making a mockery of the preaching of the Holy Word of Almighty God. He said this will be going on in the last days. And they're walking after their own lust, he said. And they say, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. You tell me this ain't going on. The news was on yesterday and they said they'd made a big discovery I think down in South America and come found a, a, a dragon man fossil. A, a fossil of a man that was some kind of half dragon and half man and you know, maybe the monkey theory didn't work so they're, now they're saying a dragon theory, I don't know, but they're willingly ignorant that God created it all. That God created man, yea man, in his likeness and breathed into man a living soul. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old. It was by his word he created everything. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And it was by his word, amen, by Jesus. If you can ever get it nailed down in your heart. Jesus is the Word, the Word is Jesus, and it was by His Word. See, when Jesus was, uh, came incarnate, the Word became flesh, the Word of God, and dwelled among us. And they're willingly ignorant. You know, there's none so blind as those who will not see. Those who will not see. But you see the patience that God has for these people. The, the people that are willingly ignorant. He still forbearing and he's still being patient with them and he's still giving them an opportunity and we were talking out on the porch a while ago with some of the men about how that they wish that the lost people in this community would come to Christ and how they wish that the lost people right around this church would come to Jesus and as we were talking there was a lawnmower cranked up somewhere and we could hear the lawnmower running here on Sunday morning God is reaching out Amen. Jesus is reaching out to whosoever will. Let him come and let him drink of the water of life freely. And the church is sending out the call. Whosoever will, let him come. And God has not given up on man. And uh, he's reaching out. And, and then it says this, Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, listen to this, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition. That means the destruction of ungodly men. Here we see the, the mercy and the severity of Almighty God. I mean, He's holy God. And He is long-suffering, but His suffering is not indefinite. And there will come a day when He will judge man. And uh, the Bible says that uh, they'll be brought into destruction, these ungodly men, and uh, that's reserved unto fire. This world has a reservation for a fire baptism. And uh, He said, listen, verse 8, now He's talking to the saved again here. He says, but beloved, that's the saved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 
Brother Jeff brought it out in the Sunday school lesson. I jotted down uh, some of the things he said, but at the very first of the Sunday school lesson, he was talking about being patient. And how we have to be patient. God is patient with man. Is He not? I mean, it's been over 2,000 years since Jesus was born. And, uh, you know, 2,000 years of preaching the gospel and preaching that Jesus had came to save this lost world. The mystery of Christ Jesus has been revealed now. All the prophets that were sent looked into that through, through the Old Testament. And now the mystery of Christ has been revealed through His death, burial, and resurrection to this lost and dying world. And we keep preaching it. And God hasn't given up. And listen here, a thousand years is one day and one day is a thousand years. Well, what's a thousand years to God Almighty who is forever past and forever future? Amen. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the first and He is the last. What's a thousand years to, to God? It's a drop in the bucket. To us, 70 years. Man's days is three score and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score. If you're here and you're past 70, say praise God because you're a strong person. Amen. Yeah. You, you've come to that point. You've gone 70 years in one minute because of strength. A lot of people don't make it that long. A lot of people don't make it out of infancy or out of childhood. Some people don't make it out of adolescence and some people don't make it out of middle age. And if you've made it past 70 years, praise the Lord. But God's mercy extends. Listen. Thousands and thousands of years His long suffering. And, and He's telling the Beloved, He said, don't be ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is His one day. And verse 9, He says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Amen. God is not going to renege on His promise. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. The Lord is not slack. He's not slack in His work. Amen. He's not slack in His testimony. He's not slack... Uh, praise God in His promises. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. Listen, if the lost people within the sound of my voice, or the lost people within this community, could understand and 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 realize, as I do. That it's by God's mercy and His long suffering that you're even drawing your next breath. Amen. Because when your life is over, it's too late Amen. to repent. And uh, you say, well now wait a minute. I thought the Lord chose us. We didn't choose Him. There may be somebody thinking that this morning. Well, that's right. But you know who He chooses? The ones who believe on Him and the ones who repent. The ones who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and repent. Those are the ones that the Father gives to the Son. And the Son gives them eternal life. And saves their sin-sick soul. God did everything He could to save a lost person. In His long suffering, listen, Israel is given to us as an example. Down through the years, God sent Israel prophets. He sent them preachers. And they came and they preached the Word of God to them. And they came and they prophesied and they told them the Word of God. I mean, listen. Abraham came, he was a prophet. Moses came, he was a prophet. King David prophesied all the way down. And you, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Hosea, Amos, all those prophets came. And they killed the prophets. And they locked them up in prison. They stoned them. They tortured them. What? For preaching the Word of God. This Apostle Peter that wrote this very epistle right here was crucified for the Word of God. He was crucified in Rome and tradition said he was crucified upside down for what? Preaching Jesus. Hold your place right here and, and turn back if you will to Matthew chapter number 23. As we hear Jesus Himself, 
as he mourns over Jerusalem and talks about the long suffering of God. He says this, verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them shall, ye shall kill and crucify. That's what they did to Peter. That's what they did to Jesus. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, uh, son of Barcaeus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Then listen to what he says. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not... Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Jesus weeping and mourning over Jerusalem because he sent them preachers, he sent them prophets. They made a mockery of it, they scoffed at it. And the long suffering of God Almighty. Listen. He listened to His own Son cry out from the cross and say, My God, My God, why hast Thou forsaken Me? So He could save you. Amen. So He could save you. You say, well, what's God done to save me? He died on the cross of Calvary to save you. God the Son said it is finished and bowed His head and died. When the Savior cried, bowed His head and died, Oh, praise the Lord. He did it all for me. Amen. He did it for you. Amen. And we'll stand before Him guilty. Amen. Had it not been for a man called Jesus, Amen. then forever my soul would be lost. The brother talked this morning about how we've got an intercessor, a mediator an advocate in the Lord Jesus Christ who stands before God the Father. And did you know that when Jesus died, He went to heaven and He took His blood and sprinkled it upon an altar before God the Father? And every time God the Father looks at that altar and He sees the blood, He sees what saves your soul. And that's what stays the wrath of God back. The long suffering of God. God has not given up on you. Sinner. Lost person. We shouldn't give up on them either. God hadn't given up on them. He's long suffering to usward. Listen. He's not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want anyone to die and go to hell. Look at the great lengths that He went to. I mean, He sent His only begotten Son to die on Calvary's cross to save us from our sins. Praise the Lord. We were redeemed not with the corruptible things of this world, but by the precious blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Plus or minus nothing. He's not willing. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Friend, Jesus told a parable that has to do with God's long-suffering. With His long and, and the way He's a mediator between us. Turn, if you will, hold your place here and turn back to Luke chapter number 13. Luke chapter 13. Jesus is talking about repentance. Now remember, the Scripture today said, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You can't be saved uh, apart from repentance. When you hear that, that the Lord, listen, died on Calvary's cross and His blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness, then that ought to be enough for us to turn from our sin and follow Jesus. That ought to be enough for us to repent, listen, and follow the Lord. Listen to what He says right here. Uh, 
verse 1. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. In other words, there were some Galileans out there that was sacrificing to the Lord and Pilate, old wicked Pilate, uh, killed them and mingled their blood with the blood of them, their sacrifices. I, I kind of think that he offered them up on the altar. Old Pilate did. Yeah. And Jesus answering and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay. But except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now that's not my words. That's the words of Jesus in the red letters. Except ye repent, ye shall all, A-L-L, likewise perish. Amen. Now skip down to verse 6. He spake also this parable. Now this goes to the long suffering of God. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Now this man, he owned the vineyard and he owned the fig tree. Don't miss this. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. How many of you know that the manifestation of our salvation is in the fruit that we bear? How many of you know that if you're saved, if you're plugged into the vine, you'll bear fruit because Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. And if you're in me and I abide in you, you will bear fruit. Amen. What fruit? The fruit of the Spirit. Amen. But he came to this tree. He said, uh, he, this man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and he found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years, there's the long suffering of God, the long suffering of the farmer. He said, These three years, I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. He says, Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? I've heard this, read this about all my life, never knew what cumbereth meant. So I looked it up. You know what cumbereth means? Why does it break through the ground? Y'all that I have gardens and grow things, when that thing sprouts up, it breaks through the ground. It's cumbering the ground. It divides the soil. It comes up. He said, why is it even growing up here? Why is this thing even growing and, and shooting up right here? Because there's no fruit on it. And this is what he said. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering, now this is the dresser of the vineyard, he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. Let, let me work on it, Lord. Let me dig around it and let me fertilize it. Don't, don't do it this year. Let's don't cut it down this year. Let's dig about it. And let's fertilize it and let's see what happens. Verse 9, And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Now I see two things in this. I see the Lord Jesus Christ as a mediator between God and man and making an intercession and standing in the gap between us and saying, Look, hold back the wrath of God until it's time. And then I see people praying for their lost loved ones and saying, Lord, don't take them out of this world till they get saved. Lord, don't take them out of here till they get saved. God have mercy. God be long-suffering. He's already waited three years. It ain't bearing any fruit. He said, give it one more year. And let's see what happens. If it starts bearing fruit, well... But if it don't after that, then cut it down. I'm going to tell you something. John the Baptist came preaching up back there in Luke chapter number 3. And one of the things he said about the Lord Jesus Christ is he said the axe is now laid where? At the root of the tree. Amen. The axe is laid to the fruit of the tree. The things are set in motion and all judgment is given unto the Son. And yes, we see the mercy and we see the grace and we see the love and we see the long-suffering of God. But there will come a time when time will run out. Amen. Today, on planet Earth, 
There's going to be about 50,000 people on planet earth today that time's going to run out. Because the lights are going to go out and every day on planet earth there's about 50,000 people being born and there's about 50,000 of them dying. Stepping out to meet God, whatever shape they're in. Saved or lost. Out of that 50,000, there's a certain percentage of them, a few the Bible says, that step into the arms of Jesus and are saved. And there's a whole lot of them that are on the wide broad path to destruction that drop off into hell by the bushel full. Because why? They scoffed and they mocked at the preaching of the Word of God. They scoffed and they mocked at sin. And then what happened? The hammer fell. Listen to what the Bible says. 2 Peter chapter 3, the original text. He's telling the beloved, Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness, but His long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. This notion that there's only certain people that are predestined to be saved and then certain people that are predestined to be firewood, that's a false doctrine. God wants everybody to be saved. Amen. Yeah. The ones who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who turn from their sin and trust Jesus, listen, praise God, they were predestined. Before the mud seals of the world was in, because God not only knows, He not only knows who's lost, He knows who's saved, and He knows who's going to be saved. He knows past, present, future. Now we don't. We don't. So the call goes out to whosoever will. Let him come. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But look at verse 10. Look at the very next verse. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You want to know when global warming is going to be here? There it is. This earth and all the works in it are going to burn up. Say, so when's that going to be? Revelation chapter number 20. And when Jesus sits in the great white throne judgment, heaven and earth, shall flee away from the face. The heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements themselves, you know, you remember in chemistry class, the, the elements of the periodic table, what makes up matter, all those elements, it's all going to burn up. Amen. All the witty inventions of man is going to burn up. Burn up. I was watching a documentary the other day. I watch a lot of these documentaries because it's, a lot of this stuff fascinates me. We were watching, and they had built this flying suit. I don't know if you've seen one. They go up and jump off of a mountain. They've got a suit, and they glide like a bird. Now, it's not a parachute. This is a suit, kind of like that coyote that ordered that Acme Batman suit, you know. <laughs> it says one, one <laughs> Acme Batman suit. These guys go up on a mountain and jump off the mountain and they, they've got faith in this flying suit. And it helps them fly. And I looked at it and I told Charlotte, I said, there is no end to man's witty inventions. But all the witty inventions of man will burn up. Amen. There will come an end. The day of God is coming. Listen. Listen. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. They're going to evaporate, uh, vaporize. All these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto what? The coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Praise God. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of Him in peace without spot and blameless. Now listen at verse 15. 
an account that the long suffering, there it is, account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Thank God there is opportunity for salvation because the Lord is long-suffering. There's still hope for our lost family members. There's still hope for those in this community as long as the Lord's long-suffering is in place. We're looking for the day of God to come. For the saved, when the, when the Lord comes in the rapture and He takes us home, the day of God is going to be a day of gloominess for all those on the earth. A day of darkness, a day of seven years of tribulation time, followed by the judgment. There'll be a judgment one of these days. Listen, praise God. And hell's real and folks really goes there. There's going to be a lake of fire and hell itself will be cast into that. But right now there's time and, and right now there's a time of grace and there's a time of long suffering for lost people. God, listen, Jesus is reaching out that nail-scarred hand to you today if you're lost. And He wants to save your sin-sick soul. But here's the sad thing. We're living in the last days when people's hearts are so hardened and they're obstinate toward the things of God. Matter of fact, the Bible said, uh, the Apostle Paul told uh, Timothy, he said, But thou, Timothy, preach the word, and be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all what? Long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Amen. But after their own lust, they'll heap into themselves teachers having itch and ear. I don't like what this guy says, I'll go hear what this guy says. I want religion, but I want it to fit in my lifestyle. I want Jesus, but I want him to fit in my lifestyle. And honey, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. You'll come by the blood and you'll come by the cross and you'll come and you'll, you'll listen. You'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll come and repent of your sins or you won't get saved. Amen. Period. And he says this, account. In other words, listen, consider or, or lay it to the account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. My, my understanding of God on, Almighty only goes so far, okay? Here's what I understand. I understand that God is long-suffering. I understand that He's gracious, and I understand that He's merciful. And I understand it's because He loves us. But that's as far as my understanding goes, because here's what I don't understand. I don't understand why He loves us. Sinner, wretch as I. Why would He love somebody as unlovable as I am that's deserving of hell? I don't understand why He loves us so much. only thing I can tell you is that for right now, He's long-suffering to usward and He's not willing that any should perish. And the Bible says that His mercy endureth forever. Moses was the friend of God. David was a man after God's own heart. And you don't have to turn there. I'll just read it to you. But it's in Psalm number 86. It's a prayer of King David. And here's what uh, he said. King David is praying here and he said, verse 15, Psalm 86, verse 15, he said, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. God's long-suffering, His grace, His love, His mercy is extended to you lost sinner person today. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. God knows if you're lost. Amen. And you know Amen. if you're lost. Amen. You say, boy, I hope I'm on the right side of the fence with the Lord. I hope I'm saved. Friend, if it's that right there, you need to get in an altar. Amen. Uh, you need to call on the Lord. If you don't know for a certainty that you've been born again and saved by the grace of Almighty God, 
that you have accepted the free gift of salvation and repented and turned from your sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know for a certainty that you've been born again, would you ask Jesus to come into your heart today, just wherever you're at, and then make that public. Listen, He's not ashamed of you. You shouldn't be ashamed of Him. Praise God, He has every reason in the world to be ashamed of me because I'm a sinner. Been saved by His grace. But I have no cause to be ashamed of Him. And you know one of the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, love, peace, joy, what's the next one? Long-suffering. There's nine of them. Nine, there's one fruit of the Spirit, but there's nine attributes of that fruit. And if you bear that fruit, one of those fruit, the attributes of that fruit is long-suffering. Why? Because God is long-suffering. Now, when you get saved, here's how you know that you're saved, okay? We have the, the fleshly outward man. We have the soul in man which is that conscious part of us that will live on and on, either in heaven or hell. And within that soul is the spirit of man. Now when we're saved, God's Holy Spirit comes in and dwells with our spirit within our soul. And God the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that what? We are the children of God. It's a no-so salvation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can go through the motions, but if that Spirit of Almighty God has not indwelled us and come into, into our soul and abide with us and bear witness with our spirit, listen, the new birth has not taken place. Amen. And right now, God is long-suffering to usward. That's all of us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Repentance.